We've been in the spiritual maturation series, and we're going to continue that this morning. Um, uh, the spiritual maturation, the, the assignment that I've been given this morning is greater glory. Greater glory. Amen. And so we're going we're gonna to talk about that this morning. We'll go as far as we can go, and uh, we'll, let, we'll just let the Holy Ghost do what he's going to do. Amen. As, um, as we were ministering today, and, you know, I, all I could sense in my spirit and, and feel uh, or hear the words uh, were that the Lord is looking for a people on the earth that will press into him to, get, to receive a deposit from heaven. He's looking for a people that will press into him, hallelujah, to receive the deposits from heaven. He's looking for a people that will press into him through their praise, through their worship, through their prayers, hallelujah, through their giving. My God, he's looking for a people. Ah, that, that, like the word says, the kingdom of God suffers violence, but the violent take it by force by force. It's like, get out of my way. Get out of my way. I'm going to get that which the Lord has for me. He's looking for a people who will allow him to deposit seeds of greatness inside of them. He's looking for a people that will grab a hold of his word which is the seed, the seed representing Jesus Christ himself that will grab a hold of it. Hallelujah. And allow the Lord to just plant that deep inside of them. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. About two weeks ago, I believe it was yeah, about two weeks ago, some of you may have received a pot and some soil and a pea seed. Pea seed and also a little disc that you could plant it in. How many of you actually planted that? All right. Amen. 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 <laughs> here's, a, here's a picture of one right here at, in the beginning stages. How many of you actually have something that looks like that right now? Amen. That's crystals. All right. Oh, this is yours. This is Crystal's. Look at this one. Go, Crystal. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. So, so the Lord is looking for those that will be obedient and move out. If you did not get a chance to do this, to get a pot, to get, a, to get the, uh, the seed, then you'll have an opportunity today. We have some over there on the table there. God's using this as a demonstration to show that he wants to grow you up. He wants to mature you. He wants you to get rooted and grounded in his word. He wants you to get into that special environment that you need so you can be successful, so that you can produce fruit. Amen. That's what he's looking for. And so am I talking to a, a, a people who wants that? Who, am I talking to a people that desires to grow in spiritual maturity with the Lord? Amen. Well, when, I, need you, I need to hear that from you. I need you just to say yes and amen. I need you to agree with the word because what you're doing is the sound of your voice that produces, that produces that seed to come into your heart, to get planted and rooted. It's when you say amen and you agree with the word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. So let me just get jump right into this. Hallelujah. I really believe I, I wrote down three uh, things that I just want to share first. First of all, key messages that uh, I received as I was preparing for this. And uh, the first one is that it's time for the church to shift, to attract, host, and carry God's glory. It's time for the church to shift, to attract, host, and carry God's glory, his glorious presence. Hallelujah. Last Sunday, we had the privilege and the honor of our praise and our worship went out into the atmosphere. We sent out a clarion call 
and someone heard that clarion call just through our worship, amen, through your praise. And they came, they came, they found themselves, they were coming for one thing, but yet they, they got drawn into something else. But they heard the clarion call. It was your worship, it was your praise, hallelujah, that drew them in. Amen. And then we had, we, had, we had Elder Bill there on post, Prophet Bill on post. And, he, and, and as a prophet, he encouraged them to come on in. <laughs> Hallelujah. He encouraged them to come on in. And they came in. We're talking about, for those that are watching uh, via online, we're talking about a family that came in to our building here. And they were coming because um, the gentleman was a veteran of the Air Force, and he was stationed here at this location 50 years ago. And so he wanted to come back and see the location. At least that's what he thought he was coming to do. But God brought him back here to this while we were having service, and he, he ended up rededicating his life to the Lord. Amen. And we believe that the Lord healed his body. We believe that the Lord added years to his body for being obedient. Amen. So the Lord's call, calling us to, to be transformational in what we're doing in our services. To move and flow with the Spirit. To allow the Spirit to take form. We may have an agenda. We may have something prepared, ready to go. But we may have to throw that out. You know, I've already told, I've already told our media team, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm, I'm up here by faith. I'm just standing before you by faith. I don't know what God's going to do, but I know he's going to do something awesome. I know it's going to be bigger and better than I could ever imagine. It is not about me, but it's about him because he's a big God. Amen. Amen. So I, I believe that, that this is the time, church. This is the time that God's calling us to yet another level in him God, to, to, to be attracted to his glory, to allow his glory to be planted within us as a seed. Amen. To be deposited deep, to get roots. Father, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And because of his glory, it's going to draw people in and people are going to be running in here. This will be like a hospital because people are coming here to get healed and delivered and set free they're going to be running into the church my god there's so much going on right now in our nation there's so much there's so much stuff going on so my shekata ta ba 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 shekata she ba 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 shekata. The enemy is threatening, uh, uh, um, bringing threats to bring a uh, nuclear type war. I mean, we've got threats of race riots. We've got all kinds of things going on. We've got family issues. We've got all of this stuff. But you know what? The answer is not the politicians. The answer is not anything else but Jesus. Jesus is the only answer. My God, you cannot depend on, you will not be able to pin, depend on a man. You're going to have to depend on Jesus. Now, now God can use a man. He can put him in position, put him in place to be used by him. But let me tell you, it's going to be from us pushing into his presence, pressing into his presence and receiving revelation and fresh anointing from him. That's what it's going to take. That's how we're going to solve the problems of society. Listen, I'm telling you, the day is coming that the government's going to come to the church and say, can you help us out here? Can you help us out here? Can you come over here? Can you come to this neighborhood? Can you come to this region? My God, can you, can you come over and help us out to bring healing and deliverance to this land? My God, my God. See, they were never called to do that. That was the church. The Lord had always positioned the church to be the solution to the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we've got some people in some places that they think they've got the solution. But God says, no, I've got my church, my glorious church that I'm raising up right now. I'm pouring out my glory into this church. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number two, there's going to have to be a personal transformation. Hallelujah. A personal transformational 
process is going to have to take place in our lives. We're going to have to experience his greater good for us. We got to understand, first of all, it's a good news. It's a good news. Amen. So that means it's goodness for us. He, he desires to give us the good news, the goodness of who he is, his glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We receive that right now. Your goodness, Lord. We receive from you the greater good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God is working on us and through us, through our faith for a, tr a personal transformation to connect us up to the right company. Some of you have come, maybe, you know, um, as you haven't been here a part of Legacy Life that long, but you came right in and you connected up with the company of people. Amen. That's because God has deposited in you a seed and that seed has to be nourished and that seed has to be in an environment in which it can grow. Amen. And so that's why you, you were attracted here. And so you came in here. And so now you're going to be developed. You're going to grow. You're going to be strengthened. You're going to be discipled. You're going to be taken to the next level in the Lord. If you, if you'll do your part, if you'll do your part, amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. So baba shekatata. See, the Lord wants to bring us through a transformational process where we receive his reality. It's not the reality of the world. It's not what's going on around us, but it's the reality of heaven. Hayadanama shekatata ba shekata. Heaven, which is limitless, without limits. There's nothing that he will not do. There's nothing that he cannot do. Hallelujah. All things are possible. Hallelujah. Through Christ for those who believe. Do you believe, saints? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So that, that, that um, tangible reality that we're going to receive directly from heaven, it's going to come through our relationship with him. It's going to come through intimacy. It's going to come through spending time with him in his presence. It's going to come through pressing into him. You know, when the times get rough, when things are not going the way that you want them to go, that's the time you got to press in. You got to press into him. Hallelujah. It may feel like this now. It may look like this now, but God, I'm, I'm pressing into you. I know my hope and my strength is in you, Lord. That's what you, we've got to do. We got to keep pressing in so that he can raise us up with the soil, the right soil, the right seed, the right foundation. My God, thank you, Lord. You're growing us up. You're growing us up. Hallelujah. So that we will not be carried away by every wind of doctrine, that we will not be moved by and shaken by what we see in the natural, but that we're strong and we're strengthened. We've got strong roots that we're grounded and rooted in the word of God. We're standing on the word of God. We're not being tossed by the wind, my God, but we're stable. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The thing about a seed is that a seed must be awakened from death. This seed that you receive, this pea seed, I believe that's what it is, right? A pea seed. This little seed that you receive, it's not going to grow in this bag that I have. Not by itself. It's, it's just a seed. It's basically dead. It really is. This seed has to be awakened. It has to be awakened. So a seed is dead until its outer shell, the covering on this seed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The outer covering, the outer shell of this seed right here, it has to go fall to the ground. It has to fall to the ground. When it goes to the ground, then it has to decompose. It has to die. That outer shell has to die. It has to, it has to fall off. 
but hidden deep within it. My God. If it's placed in the right conditions, if it's connected up with the right company, if it's where it's supposed to be in position and place when it's supposed to be, hallelujah. If it's in that, that soil, that right soil, the right conditions, then the embryo inside of this seed, it is awakened. It is awakened. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It can be awakened and planted and grounded and rooted. And it can begin to grow. In John 12, 24, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the grain of wheat fall to the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. So there's some things, some there's some outer covering, coating that the Lord's trying to take off of us. He's trying to remove some things. He's, you know, it's death. It's death. So it's got to, it's got to go. It's sin. It's, it's things that, uh, that, that will hold you back. It's the limitations of life. Those things must die. It must fall to the ground. It must be humble enough, teachable enough to say, you know what? I don't have it all. But I know if I can connect up with this company of people, that I can grow and I can be nourished. Hallelujah. That these things can die. These things that are on me, that, that are connected to me, that shouldn't be. That this thing can die. That hallelujah. And I can get grounded and rooted. And I'm going to produce fruit. So let's go back to that scripture. This is, a, this is a scripture about what Christ did for us. Amen. He became the seed. He was the seed, right? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He chose to be the seed. The word says that the Lord gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. That whoever shall believe they, that they would not perish. Amen. I'm paraphrasing that. But, but he became the seed. He became that seed that went to the ground. Hallelujah. Fell in the ground that took our sins upon. Even though he was not sin. He, did, he was not sin. But his father gave him for you and me. He was given as a sacrifice. He was given as a seed. Amen. Zoma sekata. Hey, and as he was given as a seed, Jesus Christ was given in the seed and he went into the bowels of the earth and he went to hell and he took the keys to the kingdom. Hallelujah. Shoma sekata. And he came back and the Bible says that he rose on the third day from the grave. Hallelujah. Shoma sekata tabashekata. And he says, I become life and I become life for many. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Much fruit shall come forth now. Because he gave his life for you. Because the father loved you so much that he would give his only begotten son. There's no greater love than a man that would lay down his life for a friend. Hallelujah. What great love. What great love is this? What great love is this? There's no love like that. We will never experience any love like that. It's only the love of a father. It's only the love of Christ. He freely stepped down, even though he was equal, even being equal with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yet he stepped down from his place to take the place of sin in your life. So these things that we're carrying around, these weights, we don't have to carry that because he paid the price. You have, we have to remind ourselves of that daily. He already paid the price. He paid the price. All he wants to do is to give you by grace his goodness. It's goodness. His goodness. That's all he wants to give you. That's what he has in place for you is, is his goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So that you may bear much fruit. So that you may impact your home. That you may impact your, your work environment, your city, this region, the nation, and the nations of the earth. That you would bear much fruit, Kennedy. 
that you would bear much fruit. Shoma se kata, zoma se keteta ba shokoto. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number three, to become rooted and grounded in love. Hallelujah. That's that whole passage of Ephesians, the third chapter, in Ephesians 3.17. And we'll just talk about it, though. Hallelujah. We know that through the dispensation of the Spirit and not the... That's what we receive. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Not, Not of the old covenant, the Spirit of death, but... The new covenant, the dispensation of the spirit of life. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Spirit brings liberty and freedom. The law in the Old Testament. The Bible, it says the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. So we receive that life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So so we're going to have to rely on the Holy Spirit to lead us, to direct us, to guide us, to be our gauge. Hallelujah. To be our gauge, to know the things of God. As a child, I spoke as a child. Hallelujah. 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 But I'm growing up in the Lord. I'm maturing. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So let just allow that word, just allow his word to sink in you, to be deposited in you right now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. So we grow from the nourishment of his word in, in a deep Roots of relationship in him. That's where we get the right environment to produce fruit. Hallelujah. I like what um, Tony Evans said about, um, he said, he said, spiritual maturity or growth is defined as a transformational process by which we allow the indwelling Christ to increasingly express himself in and through us resulting in a greater capacity on our part to bring God greater glory and experience his greater good for ourselves. Hallelujah. Greater glory. Greater glory. Thank you, Jesus. John the Baptist said it this way in John 3.30. He says, Jesus must increase and I must decrease. Hallelujah. So we grow spiritually even more so when we allow Jesus to be expressed in and through us, not through our fallen humanity, but to allow the Holy Spirit to rule in us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So so why do we need spiritual maturity in 2 Peter 3.18? It says, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Hallelujah. So we have to, we have to spiritually mature in grace and knowledge we have to move in that area of knowing that by grace it wasn't anything that we did anyway it wasn't us but he did it just let that settle it's not you doing it it's him doing it so my shekata my shekata it's our mind our knowledge truth and faith working together hallelujah and, and in 2 Peter 3.18, we know that it's God's will and desire that we would grow. Because he commands us in that passage. It basically, he's saying that stagnation is not an option. Because if there's stagnation, if you don't grow, then it becomes a deformity. If it's a deformity, then it's outside of his will. 
It's not his goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The Lord created us for his glory. In Isaiah 43, it says, Everyone who is called by my name, whom I have created for my glory, I have formed him. Yes, I have made him. Thank you, Lord. So the word glory means to be weighty, of great worth, of value. In the Torah or in the Old Testament, the Hebrew word is translated as kabod. The Aramaic word for glory is Shekinah, used for God's glory by the Jews. And it's and translated in the Greek, glory, the writers use the word doxa for glory. Shomasikata, the weighty glory of the Shekinah glory. Shema Shekiata. If you've been a part of this house, you've heard Apostle talk about the Shekinah glory. Hallelujah. Talk about the Shekinah dome. Hallelujah. That we, we've seen that vision for years and we believe that God's going to do it in and through us. In Numbers 14, 21, the word says um, that the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth. It says, but as surely as I live and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth. Oof. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Isaiah 6, 3, the seraphims cry out, Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Because he's, he's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscience. That means that unlimited power. He's able to do everything. He's present everywhere at the same time. He's an all-knowing God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Oh, Shema Nama Shekata. In Isaiah, Isaiah, and I want to say Isaiah, Isaiah, when I look at Prophet Minerva, I want to speak it the way she says it. But <laughs> 11 10 because you know what because what's inside of her is getting inside of me I'm receiving from the senior prophets of this house and sometimes I can hear her voice in my head believe it or not <laughs> and some of you I can hear your voice in my head from time to time because you're ministering to my heart you're ministering to me God's using you Sarah, Blanche, amen. <laughs> many of you, Melissa, Kishana, many of you in this room, I can joy. I better not I'm about to stop talking about all these. Yes, and even Tiffany has spoke. I've heard her voice before. <laughs> She's going to be a, a mighty woman of God. Amen. Amen. So in Isaiah eleven ten, it says in the day, the root of Jesse will stand as a banner for the peoples and the nations will rally to him and his resting place will be glorious. See, when we come together and we glorify the name of Jesus, we're bringing value. He's adding value to us, but, but we're declaring value in the land. So the land has to respond. All creation cries out. Hallelujah for the sons of God to rise up. So my shekata, my shekata. So to na 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 shekata. She. When we share our testimonies, when we share him with others, when we promote his worthiness, his majestic ways, through our praise, we're adding value. Begin to just stir yourselves up. We were created to reflect 
his character, his DNA. Shomasi Kata. In 2016, the word that was declared over the house of Legacy Life Church, we said, we said his glory seen in 2016. He wants us to grow spiritually because he's passionate about his glory. Growth increases our capacity to glorify him. What makes it weighty is that it has measure. It has measure. It's, it's quantifiable. Shema, shema neseke. Hey, glory to your name. Shema sekete. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Are you a vessel that his glory can reside within? Are you a vessel where his, his glory will be attracted to? That his glory will be hosted. You can host the glory of God in, within you. Are you a carrier of the glory of God? Wherever the, your foot shall tread upon, the atmosphere has to respond to the glory of God that is within you. That it must come forth with a greater measure, with a greater dimension than what you've known before. The whole earth is crying out. The things that are going on in, in the news right now is because the earth is groaning. It's crying out for the sons of God to stand up. For the sun brands to come forth. Saints, this is our hour as a church to rise up in the earth. Hallelujah. This is our time. This is our time, Aaron. It's your time. It's our time to be the body, to be the church, the glorious church that would represent his glory, that would hold his glory. Hallelujah. That would, would allow to themselves to be filled as a vessel and overflow into the streets of this city. Hey, Shoma. Hey, Shoma. Sheke. Emma. Sokoto. Seba. Baba. Shekata. Someone needs this glory. You pass by people every day. We see them on the streets. They're just crying out. Will somebody, will somebody touch me? Let the glory of God overflow out of you. Be the solution. Be the answer. Be the one that God wants to use to heal, deliver, and set free. Soma shekata. Jemamama sekata. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Hey, here at Legacy Life, we've got a rich soil. We've got a rich foundation that we're building upon. My God, Shoma Sekata. We've got the nutrients that are needed. We've got the apostolic and prophetic. We've got the balance. We've got the fivefold working together. Hallelujah. Here you can, here you can grow. Here you can reach your destiny in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Soma Sekata. Hey, when that, that, that seed's in the right place, it's going to spring forth. It's going to spring forth. Hallelujah. That's why you've been seeing here at Legacy Life, you've been seeing our youth up on the platform because they've got some deposits inside of them. You're going to, listen, I'm telling you, if you don't get your place, if you don't get in place, get your position, get, get where you're supposed to be, you're going to come in here one day and you're going to find a, the next generation in your place. It's time to spring forth, saints. It's time to grow. It's time to mature. God's looking for a generation. Hallelujah. Will you be that generation? Will you be that generation? Or are you going to sit back and let the next generation come and take your place? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 
In Romans 15, 12, it says again, and again, Isaiah says, the root of Jesse will spring up, up and one who will arise to rule over the nations in him, the Gentiles will hope. Hallelujah. You're bringing hope. You're rooted and grounded. You're out of the lineage of David, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The root. The fruit is in the root. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hallelujah. So Matthew 6.33 promises that he will meet the needs of his children. His sons who pursue him. When I say sons, I'm talking about sons and daughters, but I'm saying those that will pursue the Lord. When you take back the measure, the limitation, whatever it is that's held you back, and you begin to pursue him in such a way, he says he's going to take care of you. That's why it says, he says in Matthew 6, 33, he says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Thank you, Lord. So greater glory. Shouldn't we here in, um, let's go to 2 Corinthians 3, 18. Hallelujah. Well, before that, uh, let's start at uh, verse, I'm going to start at 8. And it says, um, shouldn't we expect far greater glory under the new way? Now that the Holy Spirit is giving life, in verse 9, if the old way which brings condemnation was glorious, how much more glorious is the new way? which makes us right with God in verse 10. In fact, that first glory was not glorious at all compared with the overwhelming glory of the new way. If so, so if the old way, which has been replaced was glorious, how much more glorious is the new, which remains forever. Since the new way gives us such confidence, we can be very bold. We are not like Moses who put a veil over his face so the people of Israel would not see the glory even though it was destined to fade away. But the people's minds were hardened. And to this day, whenever the Old Testament, when the Old Covenant is being read, the same veil covers their minds so that they cannot understand the truth. And this veil can be removed only by believing in Christ. We've seen the veils worn by women in, in the Muslim countries. We've seen those veils. Listen, the way those veils can be removed, the way the scales can be removed from their eyes, that is that they have to receive Christ. There's no other way. There's no other way. Hallelujah. In verse 15, it says, yes, even today when, when read, I read that already, I think, let's see, um, verse 16, but whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Verse 17, for the Lord is a spirit and wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And some translation says liberty. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. Are you able to hold up a mirror and see Christ? Shoma Shekata. What's the image that you see when you look in the mirror, looking back at you? Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Okay, I think I'm just going to go. Um, well, let me just kind of go over a couple of things here, and we're going to try to land this plane. <laughs> The glory 
we said that that's the kabod. It is heavy in weight. We said that the glory, it's the splendor of God. The Bible says the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of God's glory. So he's revealing, he's giving you revelation about his glory. Hallelujah. And we're not talking about the former glory. For example, Solomon's temple. We're not talking about that, no. We're talking about the greater glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That we would manifest the presence of God at greater levels, greater capacity. Are you being filled this morning? Are you feeling your heart expand? Expansion, expansion. Come on, just raise your hands. Lord, I receive expansion. Feel this vessel with your manifested presence, your glory, your greater glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Haggai 2.9, it says, The glory of this latter temple shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace says the Lord of hosts. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I believe that the Lord is, it's, it's his desire to take us from glory to glory, to glory, to glory, to glory, to glory. It's a continuous improvement process. We say at work, continuous process improvement. It never stops. Glory to glory to glory. It represents the different levels of glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you go to Ephesians, the third chapter, and I'm not going to go there because I'm not going to have time to go there, but I want you to really absorb the uh, Ephesians, the third chapter, where it talks about the height, the width, the depth, uh, to know him without limitation. So if we hunger and we thirst and expect greater realms of his glory, he will pour out in our hearts. Okay. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe that God wants to take us to like, the, like he did with uh, Peter, James, and John. With Yes, through the Mount of Transfiguration. See, we haven't pressed in to, to, to receive that, to understand what it was, what was going on there. But, but he desires to take us without limit into realms of his glory. And so what they experienced there, hallelujah, glory to your name. Hallelujah. What happened there, uh, you know the story, I won't get into all, you can read that on your own, but basically they were taken into another realm of glory. And they saw Moses. Amen. They saw, they, 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 were, they were white because the glory was so heavy, the kabod of his glory, the doxa, my God, the, the Shekinah glory was so weighty that Peter was frightened. He didn't know what to do. He didn't know what to say. He was like, oh, let's just go build an altar for him, for you and him. He, he didn't know what to do, what to say. And, you know, that happens to us, right? We feel the presence of the Lord. We, we, the, this glory hits us in a different way, and we don't know how our bodies are going to respond, what we're going to do. We don't know if we're going to lay out, we're going to run, we're going to... What, we, you know, but when the glory comes upon you in such a way, you can come. When the glory comes upon you in such a way, my God, we must respond to the glory of God. 
So So greater glory. We need to believe in our heart that he wants to take us to greater glory. He wants to take us by his spirit to a new level and dimension and realm in his presence like we've never experienced before. And you know what? You know what? It's dependent upon how hungry you are for more of him. It's dependent upon you confessing with your mouth what the word says to every situation, every circumstance in your life. The application, the activation of the word that's been sown. And he will pour out and give you a perception and revelation of his presence by the spirit of God. Glory, glory, glory. I've got one more thing I need to say. Let me see if I can find that scripture. I want you to go to Isaiah 60. Thank you, Father. We're coming, we're wrapping this up. Thank you, Lord. This is what the Lord says over you. Arise. From everything that's held you back, from depression, from oppression, hallelujah, from the baggage of life. I want you to arise into a new life. Arise, shine, be radiant with my glory, says the Lord. Be brilliant. Reflect the brilliance of him. Hallelujah. He says, church, for your light has come. Diwan, your light has come. Hey, for your light has come. And the glory and brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. For, the, for in fact, he says, darkness will cover the earth. We've been seeing all these things going on. Deep darkness will cover the peoples. But he says, rise. The Lord will rise upon you. Church, Jerusalem. Ah. And his glory and brilliance will be seen upon you. He says that the nations will come to your light because you're illuminating the glory of God. Nations are going to come to you. They're going to find you. Ah, Even the kings, the governments, they're going to come to the church and say, help us out. Can you help us solve this? So lift up your eyes all around and see that your sons, that they've gathered together, they come to you. Your sons will come from afar and your daughters will be looked after at their side. And then you will see and be radiant and your heart will tremble. You're going to have joy. (laughs) You're going to rejoice. And he says, he he says that he's going to, because the abundant wealth of the seas will be brought to you. We're talking about the wealth of his glory. We're talking about money. We're talking about finances. We're talking about everything, the weightiness, the measure of his glory, which includes every issue and every problem that you could ever go through in your life. The wealth of the seas will be brought to you. The wealth of the nations will come to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you'll you'll get and you can go and read the rest of this passage. But he's talking about the tribes of the of the eastern trading tribes. These are the um, descendants of Ishmael. It says that they're going to be bringing the wealth to you. I know we've we've you know experienced some things even with 
over the years with the oil and the gas and all those kinds of things. But here in his word, he says that they're going to be bringing that to you. The nations will come to you. Hallelujah. And all these names here that you see. Hallelujah. So I'm going to let you read the rest of that. Saints, get in this word. Eat this word. This is the body. <laughs> Eat this word. <laughs> Get this seed planted in deep inside of you and let it grow. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we're just going to just stand up on your feet and we're just going to pray. Hallelujah. So much. Father, we say that we are that people that you are looking for in the earth that will press into you to receive a direct deposit from heaven. We are that people, Lord God. We are a people group, God, that, that we hunger and we thirst for you. We want more of you, God. We are a people, God, that cries out for the greater glory. Hallelujah. Without measure without limitations we cry out for more of you god we thank you lord that this is our hour this is our season this is our time father to allow you to flow in and through us in the name of jesus so we commit to you lord we commit to your covenant hallelujah the new covenant we are covenant keepers we keep our covenant with you, Lord. Hallelujah. Shoma se katama shekete. Maze kototoma shekete. We receive what you're pouring out at this hour. We receive from you a greater capacity, a greater anointing, Father, to reach this community. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We declare and we decree that the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. That the glory yes. of the Lord has risen upon us. The greater glory by your spirit. We say that we are free where the spirit of, of the Lord is. There is liberty. And we walk in that liberty, walk in, that liberty. In, the in the name of Jesus. We look forward, we look forward. to the new things, the new thing. to the deep measure, to the deep measure. Of, your of your glory, to the height, to the width, to the depth of your glory. Ah, <laughs> yes, Lord, yes, Lord. We receive that right now. We receive without measure. Oh, Zama Jekata Dama Sekata.